<coughs> it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. If you will, turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 16. <coughs> it's good to be back. And, and uh, I tell you what, I was concerned mightily about uh, the services yesterday, the condition of the the driveways and all this. I'm just thankful this morning to the Lord that uh, He solved all of our problems and helped us with these things. Amen. Okay, we want to study some this morning about uh, a rich man and a poor man in Abraham's bosom. And uh, we would like to say this morning that uh, as as we as we teach, uh, there are so many out there that is watching this uh, besides us this morning and we that are uh, full to the point that we we know what it, what's going on we need to rejoice in seeing those that are hungry fed Amen. and this morning I hope and pray to the Lord that I might be able to say something to someone somewhere in this world that would point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this morning, I pray that you'll pray with me as we study these uh, few verses that I've uh, chosen to read this morning. But in in the Luke's ch uh, gospel in the ninth, 16th chapter and the 19th verse, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Right. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried <laughs> and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom he cried and said Father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue I am in torments in this flame so this is what we want to read, and we'll study a little bit more uh, in the lesson about what Abraham told him. But I would like to make uh, a few comments there about the rich man. Now, because that the rich man was rich, didn't send him to hell. Right. And because the poor man was poor, he didn't wind up in Abraham's bosom. Amen. Now, this morning, we as God's people... Uh, know about the worldly fruits and things of this world that so many times we get our eye on and we don't need it there. Right. Well, the rich man was in that condition. Mm -hmm. He had all that he needed. He was rich. But listen, he did not have enough time, enough love or mercy to give Lazarus even a, a, a crumb or two to eat and he most certainly didn't give him what he asked Abraham to send him with was a drop of water or two. So he could have given him some water and he could have given him some food. And this shows his character of what he was made out of, what, how he thought, how, what his desires was. And so with this, we see that there was no love of God in his soul, Amen. In, his, in his spirit. So we see here that uh, another thing that that the riches of this world uh, are not God's blessings. Uh, Amen. The, the, the things that we get from this world, if God lets us have them to use them for uh, to better uh, other people and to help ourselves and to provide for ourselves, listen, it's a blessing. But this man here did not use these things as a blessing from right. God. He used them because he had a stingy heart mm -hmm. and that he uh, he was fair and sumptuously and he had no needs, but he did not want to share it with him. So we see the condition of the rich man and also uh, that 
the, 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 the poor man Lazarus didn't have uh, nothing. He didn't have a crumb to eat, a, a drink of water. He didn't have no nothing to rub on his sores, and I'm assuming that he had leprosy because of the saying that the dogs come and lick his sores. And so this morning, he did not have nothing to ease that pain, and all that he had was the, the dog. Right. And we know this morning about the dog and how what the the how the Bible talks about the dog and how the Jew thought about the dog. And so this was his this was his uh, treatment for the only uh, mercy that he had in his body. And so we we want to we want to see this morning that this this uh, uh, man he he laid at the gates of the rich man's. Uh, gate and bed. Now we, we see another thing in, in the Bible about Peter and about John when they were going up to the temple to pray. And the, the old beggar there asked John, or he asked them, said that he wanted some alms. Well, Peter said unto him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you in the name of the Lord. This man here, this man here could have done something for that man that he didn't do. Now, Peter and uh, Peter and John took him by the hand, raised him up, and he walked off. Amen. And this man here could have, could have been a blessing to the rich man. The, the, the poor man could have been a, a blessing to the rich man by even sharing... Uh, some food he could have watched him eat and he could have been a blessing to the rich man by just letting him see him eat but he chose not to do these things and we this morning as God's people we sometimes get in our mind uh, 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 things and uh, we our heart gets a little bit uh, in the hard order we mm -hmm. need to be careful with these things and uh, uh, you know even even our our leaders in our country uh, we uh, sometimes see this on the news and see that on the news and we say that old so-and-so and this old so-and-so and you know and he needs this and he needs that. Listen, I know what he needs. I know what they need. They need our prayers. Mm -hmm. They need our prayers and they need our help and, 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 that, and these prayers will help more than anything that we can do for them. So we need this morning to let our hearts go out to them because listen, one day one day Jesus Christ dying on the cross of Calvary and shedding his blood for us, he looked back on us and he said uh, that he was dying for us and he was the, he was the complete atonement for our sins Amen. and had been for him. We, we couldn't do anything. But anyway, we, we want to see this morning again there and there, there in verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, this thing that, that I, I'm so interested in this morning and, and want to, I'll share with everybody is, and I had an opportunity to be a witness to a, a Catholic uh, here a while back, and she told me she believes that even though she's, don't know the Lord. She knows Jesus, but she don't know him either. Uh, that all will be well with her, and and when she dies, she is going to uh, have the help of the priest, or she's going to have the uh, the prayers of her loved ones mm. to bring her to the point of salvation mm. after death. Well, we know this morning that God's word does not teach that. Amen. But now listen. Here's the thing of it is, Lazarus. Lazarus, at that time, Jesus had not died. <clears throat> now, Abraham's bosom was down and was there, and that's where those that tried to keep the law and, and serve the Lord, that's where they went. And the, the ones like the rich man here and those that didn't accept the Lord as their, uh, and, and believe in the Lord or uh, try to serve him through the law, they went to hell. So these people are teaching these people in these churches 
about this place called Abraham's bosom, and they are assuring them that there's a, a holy place yet for them. But listen, let me tell you something this morning. It's not there. Amen. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you what this morning, uh, they are being led by the millions, by the millions, they're, 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 and, and they're deceived. Right. And listen, what a terrible thing it's going to be this morning when those that are cast into hell are brought out of hell for judgment at the white throne judgment. They're going to say, yes, he, he, he said he'd pray for me and I'm out. Listen, they're going to be for a, 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 a flesh. They're going to be, oh, I, I made it all right. But listen, let me tell you something that's wrong. Amen. People anywhere in this world that's listening to this this morning, you take heed mm -hmm. because there is no Abraham's bosom anymore. Amen. There is no stopover before you get to hell. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sin, you're going to hell and that's where you're going. Amen. And so this morning, don't be deceived by this thing because it's a lie out of the devil's mouth and he deceives he deceives with this thing just like he deceived Adam and Eve with the fruit. Mm -hmm. And they they looked at it and it looked good to their eyes and they tasted of it and sin was passed on the world. And the same way with this right here, they look on it and they they got a they got a, a, a priest there that's telling them, hey. I'll, I'll pray for you. I got my little rosary here and I'll do this and I'll do that. And listen, everything will be all right. But listen, they're deceived people. Amen. And so Amen. don't get, don't get nothing. Uh, I, and I'm, I know none of you here has ever believed that. I, I would think not. And, but I know this morning that there is people that's believing that because I've talked to one mm -hmm. and I've talked to others. And listen, it's it's a lie out of hell and so don't, don't you don't you accept it now here again he says and and verse uh 23 and, and talking about the rich man and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments and seeing abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom now i want to show you something here this morning whether or not you have thought about it or not but listen in hell in hell people still have their sight they have their right. hearing they have their feeling this whole body that we have is there with their soul and it's there and it's going to be brought out one of these days and stand before god and be judged and cast into the lake of fire and so there's no hope whatsoever for those that are there and listen he said he said i see abraham and i see the uh, Lazarus over there and probably probably by him uh, asking for water he's seen a waterfall or he's seen something another that was was uh, enticed him to ask for water and so verse 24 and he cried and said father Abraham have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame and so this gives you an idea of what to uh is these people that are lost and on their road to hell what they're what they're headed for and mm -hmm. what their home will be eternally and there won't be no there won't be no half time there and there won't be no uh uh recess or uh, for it or whatever but it's you're there and so this morning Jesus Christ come to this world knowing all of these things, knowing what was going to happen because, listen, the law would not do it. The law would not save. They, they, try, they tried to keep the law, but it wouldn't, wouldn't save. So he had to come to this world and die for our sins on the cross of Calvary and to prevent this thing like la uh, the rich man is going through. But listen, People, they still wouldn't listen. Right. They still rejected Jesus Christ. And listen, praise God this morning that there is some that are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for their Savior. So here, this is, this is uh, in, in verse 25, after he's asked this, but Abraham said, Son, 
remember thou that thou in thy lifetime received thy goods, good things, and like Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Mm. So he didn't have anything. This was this was it. This was the thing. This was this sold it all. He thought maybe he might get some relief. But listen, and besides all of this between us, so that they would <laughs> let me read it again. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And so there is no escape. Amen. Abraham is telling them, there's no escape here. You're, you're, you're there for good. You can't get to me. And Lazarus can't get to you. Nobody here can get to you. And so you're there. And he says here, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. So we see this as, as uh, I don't know, as you would say, there was a love in his heart or a pity in his heart or, or what his reasoning for this was because, listen, in, in that condition and all this, you, would, you wouldn't think that uh, uh, anything could go in your mind about somebody else. But listen, uh, he asked him to send someone to his father's house and tell his brothers about this. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send us him to my father's house. For I have five brothers that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Now, again, we go right back to the same thing. Moses taught the law to the people. They rejected him. They rebelled. And they wouldn't listen to what he said. And so there was, there was, there was, no, there was no reasoning for them not to because of all the miracles that they had seen God do with Moses in the wilderness and all of this. But listen, they would not. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way today. Yeah. It's the same way today, people. Listen, God, the, the, the hearts of, of the people are hard mm -hmm. and their eyes are blinded and they can't see it. And this morning we ought to cry unto God and thank Him mm -hmm. from every moment of our life how that He has opened our eyes, Amen. our understanding and our uh, knowledge of what is to come if we fail to serve Him. And and uh, and listen, it's it's the terrible thing that a person could ever. I couldn't. I can't. I can't even put words on it. But it is so bad. Uh, we, we can't accept We can't believe it. But listen, people are so blind, and you know, they're, the devil's uh, imps and the devil's servants are out here putting out to all, oh, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, I'll take care of you. When you die, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And it's, it's, it's scary. Amen. It's scary because, listen, I've got... I've got loved ones. Mm -hmm. I've got loved ones that's that's going that route, mm -hmm. and I know I know they 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 believe that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this morning, it's a scary thing. It's a and so if you are if you have an opportunity to be a witness for the Lord, uh, these people that are going around and believing in this stuff, please say something to them if they, if they knock you down. Mm -hmm. you, you, you still need to do something because, listen, they need some help. And here again, this thing with the uh, Abraham's bosom, it has been moved out. Now, I want to I want to show you something this morning. Uh, in uh, in Galatians, I believe it is. Let me look and see. That's in Ephesians, Ephesians four, and and this 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 I read to you. Uh, is to me one of the things that I understand as Jesus Christ 
after his death going to Abraham's bosom and preaching or telling them, I am the Christ. He had his glorified body on. They seen him. And so he says in verse uh, 8 of uh, Ephesians 4, uh, yeah, Ephesians 4, it says, Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. Now that's when he went up and gave gifts to men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And so I know that that you can say that, that it's talking about when they put him in the tomb. But listen, I believe this morning that those people that were in Abraham's bosom mm -hmm. had never heard Jesus Christ preach in, in the blood. Mm -hmm. uh, they knew that he was coming. They knew that Messiah would come, but they never had seen him. Mm -hmm. And so when he went there mm -hmm. and he spoke to those people, they accepted him because of what they saw. And he, listen, he led captivity captive. He brought them out. Now, I want to show you something else this morning. In Matthew, Matthew's gospel, in verse 57, I mean, I'm sorry, 27. And in verse 50, Matthew 27, 50. Jesus then, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. This is talking about the coming down of the Lord. Because uh, uh, it says it's, from the uh, top to the bottom, it's a type of when he comes to this world. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, mm -hmm. and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now, I, I'm of the opinion that when Jesus Christ went to, to Abraham's bosom and come back out, and he led them out, they followed him out because he spoke peace to them, he spoke grace to them, he, he testified to them, and they saw him as they Amen. as the Jew should see him. The Jew has never seen Jesus Christ like they should see him. One day they will, but these people here, Abraham and all of those had talked uh, and said that the Messiah was coming, and they accepted him, and listen, he led them out, and as he led them out, listen, some of them was out there uh, and, and witnessing to people because, listen, uh, and in verse 52, uh, and the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy cities and appeared to many. And so these people that come out of Abraham's bosom come out and some of them before he ascended uh, and before this, and it went and witnessed to people. And so uh, uh, this is this is my way of looking at this thing. And uh, and I I hope that I uh, I don't mislead anybody. But I think that this is what happened. And uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went unto the holy cities and appeared to many. So this here again is what what I want you to see. Once this happened, this Abraham's bosom closed the gap, closed the gulf. There was no more Abraham's bosom. Right. Now, this is Amen. why I see the, these people worshiping this thing, this halfway point. Listen, this done away with it. Mm -hmm. Now, Isaiah speaks in his uh, writings in, uh, in chapter 5, I believe it is, that hell had enlarged itself. Mm -hmm. Now, this morning, that is one of the ways that I could I can reason within myself how that hell has enlarged itself. Mm -hmm. Now, I know also that there's more in there now than there was a hundred years ago. Right. I know they're going there. Amen. But still, all in all, there is no more Abraham's bosom. Amen. It's all dried up. Uh, it's just part of hell anymore. So listen, these people that are planning on stopping over, forget it. 
Amen. It's not there. Amen. And I want I want everybody to know that this morning because listen, that's this little thing right here and that teaching that they're teaching, it, it is going to cause hell to be full. And, and so this is this is the one of the things that was so important about this lesson. Now notice here back in our lesson now. And he he's telling about this gulf when he asked him if he could go or come. And he said, Beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou shouldst send him to my father's house. And so, again this morning, we, we want to emphasize this point. Uh, Abraham, Abraham said, no. No. If they won't believe Moses, if they won't believe Moses, and what Moses told them, and Moses was up on the mountain, he brought the Ten Commandments down, he heard it out of God's mouth, he was, he was, he was a man of God. And they would not believe him, and they and they seen all of these things in the wilderness, and the, and the rock, water coming out of the rock, and, and all of this, and they wouldn't believe him. And so, right. hey, uh, he said, if they don't believe that, they won't believe. If you go back and tell them, hey, I seen your brother down there in hell. Ha, ha, he's not there. But listen, that's 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 the sad part about it is this morning. So uh, here again, and he said unto them, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. And listen this morning, people. One did rise from the dead. Amen. And he's, they're still not accepting it. Right. They're still not believing it. And so it's a, it's a, it's a terrible, it's a terrible world. But listen, thank the Lord that we know what we're Amen. doing. Thank the Lord that we know the scriptures. Thank the Lord that we can, can say that the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior. Amen. Amen. So that's our lesson this morning, and I hope that uh, you got a blessing from it. I hope maybe you've seen something different. I hope that I hope that things that heard it for the first time, listen, that they say they take notice and they understand what I've tried to sell, and that the Holy Spirit will take this and burden their hearts that they might be saved. Amen. That's my prayer. Thank y'all. <laughs>